Brothers and sisters, we have come together, the people of God, drawn by His Spirit, longing for His Word, to praise the holy name of the Lord, to share His glorious news of grace, and to pray for our needs and the pains of the world, to rejoice in His love, and to be sent in His peace. We are heirs of the Father, renewed in the Spirit, when the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins as we sit or kneel. We call to mind the things that we need to confess before the Lord as we pray together. O oh God, you have searched us out and known us, and all that we are is open to you. We confess that we have sinned, we have used our power to dominate, and our weaknesses to manipulate. We have evaded responsibility and failed to comfort evil. We have denied dignity to ourselves and to each other. We have fallen into despair. We turn to you, O oh God. We renounce evil. We claim your love. We choose to be made whole through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God have mercy upon you. Pardon you and set you free. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. God strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Amen. Now, in confidence, we join together in the Christian family prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on other cities in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, who shall stand as a banner to the people. For the Gentiles will seek him, and his resting place shall be glorious. Let us join in saying the collect for the Advent Sunday. Eternal Father, whose Son Jesus Christ ascended into the throne of heaven that he might rule over all things as Lord and King. Keep the church in unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. Let us praise the Lord. We stand to join with Christians throughout the world and throughout the centuries to affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, 
Maker of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise Jesus. Amen. I know it's a little bit cold, but we want to glorify the Lord. Amen. This morning, I just want us to shake a little bit because we are preparing for a Messiah, a coming king, a glorious king. Amen. He's coming for you and for me. Let us open our hearts as we are waiting his arrival. Amen. Let us put our heads together. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for He does almighty deeds. His love endures forever. Hey, give thanks to the Lord, He's above.
I just want to say thank you, Lord. Umeni pa uhai baba na fasi nyingi ne ya siku mpya. Just lift 
lift up your hands and say, thank you. I worship you, Jesus. I just say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the Father that I've come. I say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We have gone through so many challenges, but you have remained to be God. For the far that we have come, God, it is you. And we choose this day to say thank you as we open our hearts to welcome you, our Messiah, our Redeemer, our King of Kings. Lord, come and take charge, take control, visit every family represented in this place. And anybody who is watching at home, visit them in their point of need, oh God. We bless you. We say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Kindly take your seats for prayers. And as I intercede on your behalf, kindly intercede as well as we call on the name of the Lord during, during this time of his coming. Kwa kutujalia, kwa, rehe, kwa furaha kuja kwake Yesu kutusaidia, tunaomba ulinda na kuliongoza kanisa lako katika katika utakatifu kwenye chemichemi ya ukweli uwatawale na kulisaidia liseme ukweli katika upendo wakati unaofaa na usiofaa uwape roho ya neema na ulinzi maaskofu wetu na makasisi na mashemazi na watu wote waliokabidhiwa uwaminia baraka zako kama umande ili wakupendeze kwa kweli tusaidie kuishi katika nuru ya kuja kwako na utupe hamu ya kukutafuta kutafuta ufalme wako njo bwana yesu Bwana mwema njoo kwenye ulimwengu wako kama mfalme wa mataifa. Upende kuyaongoza mataifa yote ya ulimwengu yaweze kuishi pamoja kwa amani na roho ya kuheshimiana na kuvumiliana iweze kukua kati ya mataifa na watu wote. Tuwa kuomba umuongoze rais wetu pamoja na viongozi wote wa nchi hii katika njia za haki amani na umoja kuweko na amani ndani na nje ya nchi yetu njo bwana yesu
njoo kwa wanaoteseka kama mokozi na mfariji toaombea maskini wanaoteswa wenye taabu wafungwa na walio kizuizini wakimbizi na wote walio hatarini uwakumbuke wagonjwa na wote wanaoishi na mapigo mazito waweze kufarijika katika mateso yao uwawezeshe kuweka tumaini lao kwako ili wapate amani inayopita fahamu zote njoo bwana yesu njoo kwetu kama mchungaji na mlezi wa roho zetu. Utusaidie kwa rehema e Bwana katika sala na maombi yetu haya. Uielekeze njia ya watumishi wako kwenye uokovu wa milele ili katika mabadiliko yote na hatari zote za maisha haya walindwe siku zote kwa neema yako na msaada wako. Njoo Bwana Yesu. First reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 9 beginning to read at verse 2 Isaiah chapter 9 beginning at verse 2 The people living in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of the shadow of death a light has dawned You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest as men rejoice when dividing the plunder for as in the day of midian's defeat you have shattered the yoke that burdens them the bar across their shoulders the rod of their oppressor every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning will be fuel for the fire for to us a child is born to us a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father prince of peace of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end he will reign on david's throne and over his kingdom establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever the zeal of the lord the almighty will accomplish this this is the word of the lord
Second reading is taken from Revelation chapter 7, beginning to read at verse 9. Revelation chapter 7, beginning to read at verse 9. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people and language standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshiped God saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever, amen. Then one of the elders asked me, these in white robes, who are they and where did they come from? And I answered, sir, you know. And he said, they are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb 
at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. your people gathered here so that we may hear from you. Lord, minister to us and use me as your vessel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Good afternoon, church. Praise Jesus. And now because we don't shake each other's hands, why don't we wave at each other, those who are here and those who are at home viewing us? still wave wherever you are, the Holy Spirit is saying amen. And so we thank God for this day that uh, the Lord has made so, so that we may rejoice in him. We also thank God for this great year. It's great that even though there has been so many challenges, even though it has been an year with a lot of difficulties, even though it has been a crazy year, still we have something to thank God for. You know, when we began, when uh, coronavirus came back uh, in the month of March, we didn't know how we were going to go about it. And the Lord has been with us. He has seen through. He has seen us through from one step to another and another. And so we have a reason to worship and praise him. And so today's topic is uh, celebrating Christ, the coming King. That is... Um, our today's uh, topic. And so for the next couple of minutes, I'm going to attempt to answer the question, what, how, and whom? Uh, a story is told about um, this man who were waiting to go to heaven, and uh, they were near the gate uh, to heaven, and they were waiting for the gate to, uh, to be opened. 
And so when they were there waiting, the angel of God came and uh, he told them that before I open this gate, I want you to make two lines. One line will be for men who are dominated by their wives and the next line will be for men who are not dominated by their wives. And so uh, the angel said, uh, let me leave you to organize yourself as you make those two lines and then I will go to the other side to organize um, the women. So the men, as they were waiting, they were expecting to go to heaven, they quickly made up, made the two lines. And when the angel of God came, he was so shocked because the line that had men who uh, were being dominated by their wives was unending. It was so long. And this other line had only one man. So the angel said, before, I know you guys are waiting and looking forward to go to heaven, but before I open the gate, maybe we need to give this man an opportunity for him to tell us what the secret was. And the man said, uh, actually, it's not that I was... Um, I was not, it's not that I was not dominated, but my wife who is on the other side told me to make sure that I am on this other uh, line. And so the topic is about waiting, you know, Advent, looking forward to the coming of our Messiah. We now, when we were beginning the service during the introduction, we were told what Advent is. And for, for the sake of that person who has come in late or that person who has joined the service late, maybe I can attempt to tell us what Advent is. And so Advent is a four Sunday season of expectant waiting and preparation for both nativity of Christ at Christmas and the return of Christ at the second coming. Advent is also the beginning of the liturgical year of the church. So let me take us to the readings and we will begin by reflecting at our first reading, the book of Isaiah. But before we venture into the, the, the given passage, maybe we need to look at the previous chapters for us to understand where Isaiah is coming from. Prior to this prophecy which Isaiah is giving, there has, you know, Isaiah who was a prophet and a prophet who prophesied for many years, actually 60 years, uh, he's prophesying. God called him to be a prophet in Judah, but, but occasionally the Lord would send him to the nation of Israel for him to go and prophesy them. So at this particular time, this prophecy is for the nation of Judah, uh, of, of, uh, of Israel. And so uh, what was happening in that nation is that people had... Um, had uh, deserted their God, they were worshipping idols, they were doing all sorts of um, uh, sins that, had been, that they had been forbidden from committing. They were, there was lots of oppression, they were sacrificing their children, and as a result there was famine, there was drought, there was poverty, and also they were being invaded into by their enemies who were coming from the north. And so um, at the end of chapter 8, we see Isaiah seeing a vision of a people who are gloomy, a people who are in darkness, a people who are oppressed, a people who are hopeless. That is what Isaiah sees at the end of chapter 8. And in chapter 9, verse 1, he talks of... Um, three places which he mentions in verse 1, and those places are Naphtali, Zebulun, and Galilee. And Isaiah says that, you know, I see that even though these people uh, who live in this region are walking in darkness, I see a people who will be walking in God's glory. I see a people who will be walking in, uh, in the light. I see God doing things in reverse. I see God visiting them in a special way. Now, what we need to understand about those three provinces is that they were located on the northern part of Israel. And uh, whenever enemies, most of the enemies who came to invade Israel, they all came from um, 
from the northern part. And so these three provinces were always the first to bore the blunt of that invasion. They were always the first ones to lose their wives and children. They were always the first ones to lose their property. They were always the first one to be attacked. And so when Isaiah is seeing this vision of what will happen to these uh, people, and even in the future, he sees a reverse of that. Instead of hopelessness, he sees a people who will be walking in the light, people who will be glorified, people who will be happy, people who will have, you, you know, will experience the joy of the Lord. And um, unfortunately, when, uh, prophet, when Isaiah is giving that prophecy uh, to those people, unfortunately, they didn't listen to him. Because, uh, you know, he was telling them that, you know, even though you are going through these difficult th uh, 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 things, life will change. God will visit you and he will do things in a reverse. But unfortunately, they didn't listen to him. And actually what happened is that in the next couple of years, they were invaded by Assyrians and that whole region was and the entire country was um, attacked, and most of the people were carried away to Assyria. Other people were, were killed, and Assyrians brought their own people who came and settled there in that part. And in the New Testament, that is what is known as Samaria. And so, could there be someone who is listening or watching us, watching uh, this service somewhere? And uh, the Lord has been speaking to you. And um, he's been reminding you that he knows you. Remember, this was a region that was um, hopeless. It was a region that was always attacked. And no wonder Isaiah is seeing a hopeless a people who are walking in darkness. And probably th there is someone in our midst this morning, this afternoon, someone who is going through a very difficult time, someone who is surrounded by darkness, quote-unquote, someone who is wondering what next. And maybe the Lord has been speaking to you. Maybe he's been sending his servants to tell you that he has you in his hands, that he cares for you. And probably you have not been listening. This afternoon, the Lord is reminding you that he cares, that things will change, that a day will come when he will do things in a reverse, that it will not always be like that, that a day will come when the Lord will visit you and visit you in a special way. And so what he's calling us to do is to wait on him patiently because he is coming. And so... Uh, those people didn't listen, and, uh, what, and later, even when Jesus came, because this prophecy which Isaiah is giving, it was finally uh, fulfilled, and Jesus, you know, was born, and he brought up, and guess where he was brought up? It was in Nazareth. Guess where Jesus started his public ministry? Guess where Jesus called his first disciples? It was in Nazareth. And where was Nazareth? Nazareth was a little town in the region of Galilee. That Galilee that Isaiah sees in the Old Testament is where Jesus comes later in, um, after 700 years, and he comes and makes that to be the headquarter of his ministry. But again, unfortunately, just like in the Old Testament, the people of Galilee, I mean Nazareth then, during Jesus' time, they again missed the point. And when, John, and when Jesus is uh, look, uh, making his disciples, someone tells Nathaniel that uh, we have met the Messiah. Messiah is with us. And Nathaniel is like, is there anything good that can come out of, uh, of Nazareth? And actually it's recorded in the Bible that Jesus could not do many miracles there because of their unbelief. And so today again as we wait for the coming of, uh, of the Messiah, that Messiah who was born more than 2,000 years ago, and that Messiah who will come, even as we wait for him. Is there a situation whereby he has been speaking to us, or maybe he visited us, and we didn't have any clue that the Lord is with us? Is there, could there be a, pos a possibility where he spoke to you, he visited you, but because of being occupied because of the many distractions in your life, maybe you didn't realize that the Lord is with you. And so today he's reminding us that um, 
He's a faithful God that he came and he will come again. And so we need to walk with him. We need to be alert. On, um, we need to, be, to stay alert and to tell God to open our ears and our, and our eyes so that we may see what he wants us to see and so that we may hear what he wants us uh, to hear. But then I want to take us down there in the verses that he follows um, in that book of Isaiah where we are being told that to us and to us the king is born. So we have answered what Advent is. Now the next question that we are going to answer is how this king will come. This king that, mess, that Isaiah is um, prophesying, this Messiah, how will he come? He came in an expected way. He came in a way that they didn't expect. Probably they were waiting and looking forward for a Messiah who will be born in, in a place like Jerusalem. Maybe they were looking forward to a Messiah who will be born in a given family, in a certain respectable family. And that is not what happened. Why? Because God does things in his own way. He does things in his own way because he is God. He comes in his own way. And so when we learn that, the best we can do is to surrender totally to him and allow him to do things in his own way. So he came in a way that they didn't expect. And no wonder most of them continued with their busy schedules. They didn't know that the Messiah has been born. And so even as we prepare ourselves for the for, for for Christmas, we need to stay alert and tell God to help us not to be distracted by the busy schedules that comes with festivity. Number two, this Messiah came to a people who are not expecting him. I mean, yes, who are not expect, expecting him. He came to a people who could not be suspected to be the ones who will be, um, who will be, who will, who will be their, his family members. And so, uh, that teaches us that, you know, we can never tell whom the Lord will visit. And, um, you know, when we are in a, in, a, in a service like this, it is, you know, it's always important for us to ask God to minister to us because the temptation of us looking at what is happening to someone else life is very uh, high because many times you know we point fingers and no wonder Jesus spoke and said that why do you look at the speck in someone's eye and forget the whole log which is your, in your own um, eyes and many times you have heard stories of people saying that you know that someone was uh, for so and so I wish so and so was here to listen to that someone I will actually buy a CD or I will actually download that someone and send it to so and so because it is for so and so now the message that comes uh, to us it's not for those it is for us and that is the reason why God gives us an opportunity to listen to that message and so he came to people who um, whom nobody would have expected that they will be the ones to uh, to, 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 to give birth uh, to Jesus you know Mary and Joseph lonely people and he was born in a manger and that is the same way that he will come, as in he will come in a way that people don't expect. And no wonder we are told by Mark, in Mark chapter 13, that we need to be alert, we need to be, um, to, to, to be ready, because we do not know when and how he will come. And so uh, Jesus came to a people who are not expecting, to a people nobody thought that they will be the one to take care of him. Number three, he, he used his own strategies. This king, when he came, and even when he will come, he will come in his own way because he is God. And so we can never question him. We can never we can, never, we can never tell how he's going to come through for us. And so even when it comes to praying and trusting God and waiting on God, let me tell us that God comes in his own way. He answers prayers in his own way, in his own time, because he is God. So who is this king? What are his qualities? So Isaiah tells us in verse 6 and 7 about the qualities of this king who came and who will come to judge the living and the dead. We are told that this king, number one, he's, you know, a wonderful counselor. 
He's a counselor that is like none other. He's a counselor who knows everything about us. Everybody has an idea of, of uh, who you are supposed to be. Everybody has an idea of what life you're supposed to lead. But, there is, but those people who have ideas, they depend on what info, information you give them. But there is one who doesn't need to listen to our story, and that is our Lord Jesus. He knows where we came from, he knows where we are, he knows where we are going. And so a story is told about this um, people who are going somewhere with a donkey. And uh, as they were going, they, they, were, they were walking and, and, and together with a donkey. And uh, somewhere along the journey, they met with other people and those people told them, how foolish are you? How can you be walking? And uh, there is a donkey here. And so the man decided to ride on the donkey. And they continued with the, the, with the journey. And, um, and on the way again, they met with, an, with another group of people. And those people told them that you must be the most foolish people. Because how can a whole old man be riding on the donkey and, and his son is so tired and walking? So the man came out and the, and the son went on, on, uh, went, uh, went on the donkey to ride on the donkey. And so they continued with the journey, and just before they arrived where they were going, they met with other groups of people who told them that you people, you, you need to be prosecuted because you don't, you don't uh, observe the, the, I mean, you are, you are abusive to this donkey, you do not know the rights of the animals, and so we need to take you to court because of that. And so the, the sun came out and they carried the donkey. That is an illustration of how we ha there are so many opinions from everybody. If you came out here and you're looking for an opinion of, of what your life should look like, you will hear all sorts of opinion from everybody. But there is one who is the wonderful counselor, who knows what our future looks like, who, who knows what is best for us, and that is our savior, the coming king. Number two, we are told that this, come, uh, this king is a mighty God, that he's so powerful, that there is nothing that is impossible before him. He's a father who makes a way where there is no way. He's a father who is able. And so that king who is with us, who came and was born, and who will come back, he's like none other. He's able, he's powerful. The third thing we are told about this king is that um, He's, uh, he's, uh, he's that he's an everlasting God. He's uh, a father who will ever be there for us. He's a caring father. He's uh, a loving God. He's a forgiving God. He's um, a father who is our protector. He's a father who is our provider. He's a father who is ever there for us. Everlasting. He will never die. He will be there for us. And lastly, we are, so, we are told that in this king will be the prince of peace, that he will be our reconciler, he will be our a harmonizer, that he will be there to reconcile us not only with our, not only with our, not only to reconcile us with our enemies, but with everybody and also with God. And that is why he came and died so that we can be reconciled to God and with one another. That is the sort of king that we are waiting that is the sort of king who was born in Bethlehem. That is the king that we are soon going to celebrate about his birth. And that is the king who will come again. So this king, um, who, um, the other thing that we need to learn about this king is about uh, his characters. What sort of characters does he have? We are told that um, this king is a, is a remarkable king. He was there during creation. They created the world together with God. And number two, he came and was born in this world. And um, he will come again riding on a horse to judge the world. We are also told that this king has qualities. He has a, he, he has a job description. He has, you know, the qualities of his royalty. And the qualities are... Um, uh, that that he is uh, that he will be wonderful. He is uh, a great. He is uh, our wonderful counselor. He is a prince of peace. But we are also told that this king is a righteous God. 
that he's not like any other uh, king. He's a king who is righteous. He's a king who loves us equally. He's a king whom we cannot uh, fear because he's faithful. He cares. He's a king who we will not be worried of maybe grabbing or anything. He's a faithful God. And so when we hear all that, what comes into our mind is, so what next now that the king is coming? The king expects us to submit to him. He expects us to obey him. He expects us to surrender totally to him. He expects us to walk with him because he's faithful. I share this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We now come to the time of giving our offerings to the Almighty God, and we thank you always for your generosity to this cathedral, to our members, and to the, our virtual members. Please receive our thanks always, and may the Lord bless you for your generosity. The month of November is always our thanksgiving month, and so today we bring to heart and to mind the things that the Lord has done to us. And feel free to offer an offering of thanksgiving. But as we give our tithes and offerings, 
kindly let us remember that today we will be giving a special gift towards the organ restoration. So far, we have raised seven million, and thank you for your generosity towards the organ fund. We now have the final bill, it's 40 million shillings. And we would like to give more today, being our Advent Sunday, towards the organ fund. And so, kindly consider a special gift today to the organ fund so that it can, we can start working on it uh, next year. Our pay bill numbers is 30, 30, 36 for the offer tree tides and organ restoration. And then for the CTC is 30, 30, 35 for children and teens center. We thank you people who have given also in kind. We have received wheelchairs. Last Sunday we gave one. Today we have received another from a family and others are inquiring. Thank you for all your gifts. And our dear Lord, as we give this gift, and especially today, as we celebrate the beginning of the Advent, as we await on Jesus Christ coming, we thank you for this instrument of the organ that we received that has brought worship to you for over a century. And our Lord, as we restore it, give us the uh, heart of generosity to give towards it so that we can enjoy music for many centuries to come. We bless our giving this morning in the name of God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Father, receive these gifts that we give towards your work and let them honor and glorify your name. And may you open opportunities for your people to make wealth and to serve you with all that you give them. We bless all our giving, including our wheelchair that will be used by people who need these services. And bless all those who have given in the name of God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just a couple of minutes uh, for us to have the announcements. First is to publish the bands of marriage between the persons listed in our service sheet. We publish the bands of marriage between Samson, Maina Kamau of Christ Supremacy Church, and Agnes Wanjiko Njorogi of All Saints Cathedral, Dennis Momesu Osoro of Pwani PAG Church Buxton, and Lillian Millicent Wandera of All Saints Cathedral. This is the third and the last time of announcing. Then we have Martin Gatindeti of AI Singong Road, and Leonida Achieng Combo of All Saints Cathedral, then Nathan Muema Musioko, and Joyce Ndue Muma, both of Calvary Worship Center, Nairobi, Bernard Enos Wanekea, and Masi Kemishgisha Bweshije, both of All Saints Cathedral, then Samuel Anthony O'Quiri of St. Philip's Masita, Bondo, and Gladys Petronil Akinyi Mbai of St. Francis Karen. Kevin Omondi, Odondi, and Joyce Owino Ocheng, both of All Saints Cathedral. This is the second time of announcing. Then Eric Mwangi Moturi of PCA St. Andrews, and Elaine Carrier Mothe of Kingdom Business Solution. This is the first time of announcing. If you know any just cause or impediment why this person should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are required to declare that to us. On the baptism, I hope the parents by now know, but on Saturday the 5th at 12th, we will do small baptisms uh, following all the MOH uh, protocols. So those parents that have gone through the process kindly keep time and come. We continue to invite you for Wednesday prayer and healing service that beginning, begins at 5.15 to 7 p.m. Please register in advance through our church app provided at the cathedral website. The services that are oncoming today at 6 p.m., we are inviting you for a physical and, con uh, physical and congregational, but as well as a virtual Advent carol service. If you'd like to listen to good music and scripture read, please come and be with us here, either physically or virtually, and enjoy a beautiful service. Other services, I will let you look at the service uh, the sheet that is provided online. Our halls in the cathedral remain open for those who would like to hire them, whether for uh, funeral services or any other use, kindly contact our offices through email or our contacts that are provided in our website. We encourage uh, ladies from the age of 34 and 24 and 35 years to register now for the Adili Season 6 registration. Uh, it is available in our website. It is Christmas. It, it, it's getting to Christmas time. And we are inviting you for a hymn of faith, jazz, Christian concert. As provost, one other uh, musical genre that I would like to promote uh, in addition to the classical and the contemporary is jazz. And we have uh, these two young men who come here to play uh, the trumpeters and all that. It's a beautiful music when uh, it is developed together with what we have 
And therefore, we are inviting you on the 12th of December at 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. for us to have a beautiful jazz concert here in the cathedral. There will be uh, a ticket that you need to pay, a thousand shillings, and the proceeds will go towards the organ restoration. To buy the ticket, kindly send your money on 011279721. We're going to provide these details in our website for you to buy a ticket that will go towards the organ restoration. Lastly, is a notice of sequis. This is from the Diocese of Maseno West. Receive Christian love and greetings and hope and goodwill from the Anglican Diocese of Maseno West. With regard to the ordination of one Captain Alfred Okaka Kaire to the office of deacon due on 20th of December, at St. Peter's Cathedral, Siaya, we hereby request you to announce this to the church today on the 29th, on the 6th, and then the last one will be on the uh, 13th. Please note that this sequence is required in the diocese. Therefore, if you know any cause or reason why our brother Alfred Kaire should not be ordained into the holy orders in the diocese of Maseno West, kindly could you write to us accordingly and because brother Kaira is here let me ask you kindly to stand you and your wife mama Kaira and the wife thank you very much that is Alfred let us now stand for the final blessings Brothers and sisters, may the Lord now bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the blessing of God the Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, rest upon you, rest upon your family members, rest upon those who are sick in hospitals, at home, May the Lord's touch that is divine rest upon you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.